African Cup of Nations are Ghana here, Kobono. A few way forty two a yen yibi. Sir, my member back na yen share and sem no, I say. Preparations of the Black Stars uh, prior to even arriving in Abidjan. Uh, we, they've had issues with where to even camp. Um, there are reports that they were not happy uh, by the final decision to come in Kumasi. And then just around the same time, they, they draw with Namibia. Already there's some kind of doubt on the minds of Ghanaians. Now all these things, do you think that they can still get back the supporters of Ghanaians towards this competition? Huh. Well, I think that's it. <laughs> It's a very difficult uh, question to be asked, but the reality is that everything, as far as a major tournament is concerned, would have to prepare, and the Blasters are not different from it. Uh, yes, it's been 22 years since the Blasters trained in Ghana for a major tournament, and certainly most of the uh, previous African tournaments recently have been done elsewhere, either on the continent or outside the continent. And this particular one was not really different. Mm -hmm. Now, they chose South Africa, and the explanation was that that was what Coach Chris Hilton option for. But if you ask me sincerely, I had the difficult understanding why we are going to play in uh, play at our very close neighbors, uh, Ivory Coast, and we are going all the way to the south of Africa. South Africa, I mean, to have a massive preparation. Yes, lots of argument because of the facilities available in mm -hmm. South Africa and the rest. Very excellent point, well understood. How about the weather? Yeah, uh, just to, a quick one on that. Um, frankly, I do not buy into the submission okay. that um, training in South Africa would have got Ghana not to win or not even get to the final. Go back and look at where Ghana has trained prior to AFCON uh, competitions. It, it really does not play in. Talk to top football analysts, go and read articles about this weather issue. I think that there's a whole lot of misconception about this and people have been misled on this matter. Look, Germany went to Brazil, 2014 World Cup. Mm -hmm. They got there three weeks or one month to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Where did Germany please? <laughs> <laughs> Bizarre. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it, it just should tell you, it just should tell you that, look, you need about one month if you talk mm -hmm. to uh, people who sure. know about, I mean, how the weather could impact teams. Okay. You need about one month to get accustomed to a weather. Okay. Mm -hmm. Getting there one week, one week okay, will not, not do much. Okay. Certainly. Yeah, and I think that the facilities alone and the injuries that we're trying to handle, for me, was good because training in, in Ghana, you look at the quality of the pitches, you look at even even the complaints from the players. Psychologically, you don't prepare players. Like oh. mm -hmm. So you think uh, it doesn't really matter? I, 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 think, I, think, I think it will matter to the point where they are going to spend adequate time there. Okay. But that one week, two weeks does not really count for okay. tournaments. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I said with, um, with, um, with Godfrey, but for me, I think the, 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 the highlight should be the, the number of days a team train. Mm -hmm. Because look, the African Cup of Nations is a very rigorous activity mm -hmm. and countries have won it in the past. You need to stick together as a team. Okay. And one yeah. of the most difficult issues of the Black Stars in this current dispensation has been the few days we've got are preparing for major tournament that have really cost us a lot. Mm -hmm. You cannot prepare a team for three days for a major tournament. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not, it's not all that well. Mm -hmm. Look at the Minos, look at Comoros. Comoros smashed us in Cameroon because this is a team that most of its players play mm -hmm. in, the, in the local mm -hmm. league. So mm -hmm. they really know each other. They understand where you can find the ball if this player has the ball. But our, our players, big stars, no question about their individual credibility. Yeah. If you watch, if you scan through our profile, you watch the players representing, they are, they are best in terms of individual uh, assets. But as a team, I mean, we are totally off. off. And so I think that the, the premium should be placed on the number of uh, uh, days we have at hand in preparing for major tournament. If it's one month, you can understand that Kudus will get to know that if Dede has the ball, this is where... He should be running to us. Mm -hmm. If uh, uh, Osman Bukari has the ball, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Inaki Williams will understand this as well. But if you just have two days and you look at the scenario, how Kudus arrived and even Inaki 
I mean, it's, it's a very bizarre situation for us. How, so uh, basically, it looks like you're trying to rate uh, the coach already because <laughs> you think that we, we didn't have enough operations. Do you think that's going to affect our chances, especially when it comes to his ability uh, to score goals? No, I, I don't think so. I think that, look, all the 24 teams, mm. all of them do have a stain in their dress as far as preparation for the African Cup is mm. concerned. Okay. But what is of key interest to me in terms of playing at the African Cup of Nations, mm -hmm. it's not about standing, it's not about star players that you've got. Mm -hmm. For me, it's about determination. Mm -hmm. It's about how hungry are the players are willing to win it for the nation. Mm -hmm. It's about focus because you cannot lose focus mm -hmm. even for a second in a game at African Cup of Nations. We have learned so much, I mean, to repeat some of these mistakes okay. in Cote d'Ivoire. And I also think that we need some technical genius from our technical staff because their substitutions and changes also play a key part in us mm. doing well. So it's not really about um, preparation or whatever. Mm. Godfrey, rate uh, the coach at this point, especially uh, with regards to our goalless draw with Namibia. Uh, I think that I'm the kind of person who would always make a case for Chris Hutton. I've been a keen follower of him from Spurs and um, the early 2000s and, and what he did with Brighton. But if you, if you know the kind of football or the kind of philosophy that he has, you'll not be too shocked as to what Ghana is producing on the pitch. He's not the kind of coach that likes to play uh, plush football, possessive football, yes. And he's a kind of coach that, a coach that um, usually um, will have his team become a bit vulnerable. I think what he's not worked too much on has been to uh, try to get very good partnerships among the players. And quite surprisingly, Cross Chris Hutton has been uh, the, one of the few coaches that have had consistency in his call-ups. You have at least about 70% of the names running through. We had an issue with Chris Pierre, but Chris Pierre was getting okay, the goals. It seems like Chris Pierre was able to unlock some Fortune Ghana's goal scoring. Maybe the play decision-making was a bit questionable. Mm -hmm. So you asked me to rate uh, Chris Hutton, uh, and I said that he's been underwarming. I, I would give him a 4 over 10. But I believe that um, there's one last straw that he has in the AFCON. Mm -hmm. And look, if Coach Yusuti messes this up, mm -hmm. no one feels sorry for him. And he may have to walk away. So I know Coach Yusuti knows the tax on hand. I am happy because I think that the biggest problem in this Ghanaian team mm -hmm. has been their defense. Mm -hmm. You've not had Sally. So if you look at the two friendly games we play, international friendly against Mexico and USA, yeah. There was no Salisu, there was no Amati, there was no Jiku. Mind you, these three players um, had played together for a while. The understanding was there. Mm -hmm. And so I want to see the kind of, um, I mean, uh, approach to games he deploys, whether he's going to stick with a three-back. You come to the midfield to have great fear because I think there's some crisis. Ashmeru had played with Patti uh, one or two times. Patti is now around, Salisu is there. I mean, so I, I think that there, there are a lot of puzzles for Coach Chris Hilton. And also the goal scoring department. Look at the Naki Baka where he is. A coach like Chris Hilton of his pedigree by now to be trying to figure out the best yeah. way to use uh, Inaki Williams. Because if Inaki gives us even two goals in the AFCON, Ghana should be able to get to a quarterfinal, semifinals. Because you are also going to talk about goals that Kudus could provide for you. And so I think that things are not looking good for Ghana. But just maybe um, Ghana could be one of the surprise packages in this afternoon as much as it's, it's beyond reality at this point. Kweku, Godfrey uh, is already scaring me. He's saying things are not looking good and he mentioned Thomas Pate in the absence of Kamal Dean Suleiman. All these two players, these are very important uh, players that maybe a lot of people think uh, we could have gotten a lot of chances with them. Do you think that their absence is going to affect us? Yeah, I think before I do that, I, I just want to touch a bit mm -hmm. on Chris Hutton. I also want to say that at times in winning major tournaments, it has to do with how the coach is able to marshal his players, what messages are being given to the players in the dressing room of the pitch, what is the relationship like, what is the converse, conversation like. Because if you ask about Gambia, uh, Sam Tom Fitty will tell yeah. you that, look, before they are, that flamboyant display in, uh, in Cameroon or mm -hmm. in Cameroon, he had a message for the players. For the whole of Africa, they think that the players just went up to the pitch and delivered, but he had to show them clips of what Denmark had done in previous era. So for me, I think the message is very clear. Carlo Antilotti does it several times. He picks some of the old clips, shows the players and tell you, this is how I want you to do it. So I think that uh, we need to, the coach needs to be sending the right message across to the boys mm -hmm. in, the, in the dressing room mm -hmm. for us to get a job done. Then, to the question, I think, yes, 
I mean, Pate's absence definitely is going to be a huge blow for us as a country. He's a quality player. But even the question most Panthers have been asking, what has been his contribution to the national team? Some feel that he has not delivered even a yes. quarter of what he gives mm -hmm. uh, his, his clubs, Atletico or Arsenal, mm -hmm. to the national team. Though on some very spectacular occasions, he has been able to get a goal for us. But if you rate him over 10, I think that uh, he's, done half of what, he's done half of what he can uh, happen to afford the national team. And missing him in this particular outcome is big for us. But I don't think that it should be too huge if the coach is able to mm -hmm. at least rally the players that we have available at our disposable now. Majid Ashimero, uh, we also have the local chap in there, Rich Mon Lamte, mm -hmm. that have been the toaster boy of most of, of Ghanaians mm -hmm. uh, here. Uh, if you are able to get the right message across their ears, mm -hmm. tell them, look, you are better than Thomas Pate, mm -hmm. who is not present at the AFCON. This mm -hmm. is the only ch chance you've got, Rich Mon mm -hmm. Lamte. Prove it and get chance elsewhere. I think that some of these guys have got a pedigree to deliver for the country. So it shouldn't be so much of a big group because other African countries are equally missing their key players. Mm -hmm. Kabi Wazi will not be present for Tunisia, I guess. Uh, you also talk about Nigeria. Boniface is mm -hmm. out due to injury. Yeah, yeah, uh, just yesterday, uh, Vicente Abubakar, mm -hmm. we did hear picked up an injury in training. Wow. Big, yes. big player. So as for injuries, or they are always going to live with African countries, but it is about how the, the, the technical staff are able to massage their way out of it, how you are able to use the players that you've got to be able to assess or unlock the opportunity you have to win the African Cup. Yeah, 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 um, you know, um, I think that the African Cup of Nations is also the yardstick for a lot of federations to test their football projects. And this is key because, look, before the next AFCON, it takes two years. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of federations that have been investing in their players, that have been investing in coaches. So let me uh, give you a little idea for, for Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like the fact that we're talking about uh, outside of football. Ivory Coast has invested $1 billion. Mm -hmm. This was a country that came out of a uh, civil uprising in 2011. Right after that, they go on to win the African Cup of Nations trophy. I think somewhere 2015. Yeah, 2015. Yeah. Meeting. So um, it, it's, it's a lot of money being invested in some of these things. So... I think that for a lot of these teams, the focus will also be on the football projects and how, how progressive it has been or whether they need to rethink it. And that is why beyond um, every other thing, sometimes the performance of the teams, beyond the trophy, the performance of the teams is also very key. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be very interesting for Team Ghana. Now, Team Ghana, I feel like we, we have taken two steps backwards after taking two steps forward. Sure. Because if you look at what we're doing under Coach Otto Addo, you realize that there was, a, there was a plan. He came in at a point where we even thought he couldn't qualify for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Look at Black Stars at the World Cup. They were impressive at least. Uh, yeah. Then, post World Cup, we expected that a coach that was supposed to I mean, guide the continuity, he comes on board the same um, I mean, um, a coaching staff and we are still facing issues. So it just tells you that you want to take a look at Ghana's football, but especially on the Black Stars side. Mm -hmm. And you feel that a lot of things could go haywire if this Afcon does not go well. Kweku, Godfrey is talking about investment. Sure. Is Ghana not investing enough? Or what are we missing? What are we not doing right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I mean, are we really investing? That is a big question. Because when you look at what other African countries are doing at the moment, what Morocco have invested into football, King Mohammed V, consciously, even as a government, what they have invested, he mentioned uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. They have been intentional about the project. Talk about Mali. Yes, Mali, mm -hmm. they have been perennial achievers when it comes to the African Cup of Nations. But in terms of investment and, and unlocking mm -hmm. the youth football, uh, I mean, it's been very fantastic. Under 17, uh, third place finish this, uh, uh, in the recent World Cup. Under 20 finish, I think, last uh, two years or so. Mm -hmm. Very, very massive. I think that, look, I, I mean, at times it's funny. Very, very funny. The, the players complain about the very pitch they were going to use to prepare for the African Cup of Nations. They were scheduled to use the Babayara, but moved to Dr. Che. And even with that, they were not happy about the road they, 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 they played through. We received so much money from CAF, the Ghanaman uh, uh, Soccer um, Center of Excellence in Pram Pram. Couldn't we have lifted the face of that uh, facility, at least to serve our national teams in terms of preparation? Couldn't we have had one major stadium done by the Ghana Football yeah, Association, just for the national team. Because if only Dr. Kwame Chie could start a project like this, when we knew that a time would come 
where the blacks are we'll training prior to an AFCON mm -hmm. that was scheduled for January 2024. Then we did ourselves a big service. Seriously. Because look, you need to we need to save money and, 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 and fix other issues. Fix other issues. I mean, this is football. This is what Ghana loves. Mm -hmm. And if this is what we love, and we are even struggling to maintain it, or we are even struggling to invest into infrastructure, even with the athletes, there are some question marks because the focus has been on the blasters. Aside the blasters, talk to the other national teams, being the women and the rest. Yes, they've improved recently in terms of the incentive that I've been giving them. But in four, seven yeah. years ago, it is nothing to write them about. I think that we need to do better. I mean, the transition level of our national teams should be something this uh, current administration mm. should pay so much attention to. Yeah, yeah, just a quick answer. You know, I watched the video about England. You know how much of a big deal it is when English young players are called for the national team. Look, three lions, it's not a joke. Even the way they come, it's like there's, I don't know whether to call it onboarding. When they come, there's this kind of van that picks them up. There's a special seat they wear. And when they step at the, the venue, the English FA, mind you. So when players enter into the national team, there's this sense of, of innate drive that, look, we want to do so much because other people didn't get a chance. Sometimes those things matter a lot. Very, very. So when players come and they are talking, they are complaining. Why do you think a player like Thomas Partey, who has got it, or someone like Barbara Mann, mm -hmm. whose woes began at, let's say, an Afghan or playing for Ghana, next time when he comes to Ghana, he will not go for a hard tackle. That hard tackle could lead to a transition that could lead in a goal. Mm -hmm. And so there are petty things that turn out into some big bubble that could really disturb us. Mm -hmm. And yes, I don't think it's a total division for what you're talking about. Yeah, sure. As I said, it is a test of the football projects. When you see Morocco, let me tell another example about Morocco. When Morocco is going to an African Cup of Nations, they're very intentional about some of these antics by host nations. And you know what happens in Africa. Mm -hmm. It's like how of going to Morocco and then you mm -hmm. go and then sometimes they, I remember Ghana under 17, they went for a, a, a World Cup qualifying. Yeah. The place was locked. Yeah. The dressing room was locked mm -hmm. for like 30 minutes, okay. until 30 minutes to the game. So Morocco goes with their own chefs. They go with their own water. So, so you see how little things sometimes end up, okay, and they become big achievements at the end. And I think maybe Ghana needs to look at those things. So yes, the football project will be tested anyway at the African Cup of Nations, whether it goes well or not. But for us, when it goes, uh, excuse, to the other side, we we'll definitely bring back these issues and then try to rehash them so that um, Ghanaians will get to know that there's much more to the football than we see on the screen. Gwegu, everybody is talking about Mohamed Kudus. Are we expecting a lot more from him than he can give? Uh, can we rely on him alone to do something for us? I think football is a team effort. He's a star player in his own right at the moment. Um, he's one of, if you, whether you like to notice our face at this particular point in time, and you watch Mohamed Kudus since his outbursts at the national team level, yeah. Uh, in that game against South Africa at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium, mm -hmm. um, he has always shown promise that even with national team, he can be able to do something for us. Mm -hmm. His first 10 minutes in the, on his debut today alone tells that this guy is a guy earmarked for greatness uh, with the Black Stars if he continues with that particular form. Mm -hmm. Look at his form at class, at club level, excuse me, he's been very consistent, not just land, scoring so many goals, transitioning to uh, Ajax. Um, Ajax, very consistent. And even look at how Ajax is struggling at the aftermath of Mohamed Kudus. He's got into the English Premier League that even some players will not even dare take a transfer to go and play because of the, the, the buzz that comes with it, the kind of uh, the, 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 the headlines you can make if you fail to deliver. But he got there and with West Ham, he has already started scoring. Even at national team level, he has scored, I think, uh, some goals for us already. Mm -hmm. And averagely, in every three games, Mohamed Kudus has played for the Black Stars. At least he ensures that he gets a goal. That in itself is a very good something for us. The problem with Kudus is how Coach Chris Hutin or his technical staff can't be able to uh, give him a, a particular role mm -hmm. on the pitch. Of course, in West Ham, we saw how David Moyes, I mean, at least, massaging him around because of his pace and physicality that he's got. They, they ensure that they, they use him at a very important uh, uh, point to receive power from Paqueta, Susek, and the rest. But in the Black Stars, who is going to service Mohamed Kudus? And at what position is he even playing? Are we using him in the midfield? Do you want him to play for the wings? Do you want him to play as a leading striker? 
what what have we discovered about him at national team level? Because at the national team, we don't have so much time at our hand to be able to try an error. Mm -hmm. No, you need to watch him and guess what you mm -hmm. need to do with, with Mohamed Kudus. Yeah. And I think that he's got so many goals under his belt. Mm -hmm. If the technical team can unlock it, and he get three goals for us. I think it should be very yeah, I think I, I saw a partnership between Kudus and Jordan. And mind you, Jordan comes to this tournament having assisted five times for Crystal Palace, which is key. Mm -hmm. If you watch uh, the goals that Ghana scored against South Korea in the 2022 World Cup, mm -hmm. it came from the foot of Jordan. So mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the things that Coach Chris Hilton wants to pay close attention to. How do you um, get to, as I was talking about partnerships, and that's been a the grand theme of some of the, the I mean, the, the, the comments I've made here. Yeah. And so it'll, it'll be quite interesting. But I, I think that Ghana should look to explore the, the, the form of these people. Inaki, as uh, Jordan Kudus, I think that if they are in good shape and if they can bring their A game, I think Ghana will be fine. Very, very fine. Very Godfrey, fine. I want to stay with you. Let's look at uh, Group B. Egypt, ah, the biggest team, I mean, the team that has won the AFCON more than any other country. Kevin, uh, we thought we were stronger, but I think our last encounter, they beat us. Mm -hmm. Now we have um, Mozambique. I mean, you can never tell what surprises they can pull. What are our chances in this particular group? Yeah, I, I don't know, but I have a feeling that the game against Kevin has drawn written all the it. Wow. And I've been seeing this all through the week. Um, Kibet is a team that likes to possess the ball. And if you've watched Ghana in the last 10 games against teams that have tried to possess and keep the ball, it's not been good. When we went to Comoros, Comoros tried to hold the ball for a greater part of the game, especially in the first half. Yeah. And sometimes it's, it's not been too good for Ghana. I've had issues with Ghana's transition from attack to defense, especially if you watch our fullbacks in those two friendlies and how they transition. Even if it's even about interpersonal playing, even how we get to understand each other, to even fill, fill the spaces for each other. It, it's, it's not been good for Ghana to some extent. So, um, yes, if you look at Kivet, I think Kivet will be tougher for me. Even uh, in my eyes, Kivet is a tougher opponent than uh, Egypt. Mm -hmm. Because in Egypt, there's the awareness that we are playing Egypt. You can't make too many mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that one alone perhaps could bring the boys to the party. But we need a good result against Kivet. And... I think Mozambique is, is the missing piece here. Mm -hmm. Mozambique, um, in their uh, qualifying group, they uh, came out as... Um, okay. they, they finished four, four points behind um, leaders, the leaders. And it's a team that has been great. For them, this means so much. Since uh, 2010, they've not been at the African Cup of Nations. And already, uh, Coach Kikinio has done so well to be able to drive the guys all the way through here. And so it's not looking very easy for the Black Stars. But for me, I think that Black Stars will need to fight for um, perhaps a second place. Mm -hmm. I also have the belief and confidence that Black Stars are the kind of team, it's a tournament team. But from what we saw in 2021, no one will ever think that Black Stars, I mean, should be seen as a tournament team. And so. I think for Coach Chris Hilton, there needs to be a plan. More points can I get from which game? If the game against Kibet is getting too tough. And for Kibet, I want to think that the Black Stars would have prepared for the first half. Every team going to this uh, group will know that Black Stars has an issue with their first half. Mm -hmm. And perhaps it's also an issue of how Coach Chris Hilton communicates to his players on the pitch. It's one of the most difficult things in, in coaching on the pitch, especially when things are going bad. Mm -hmm. Ado had that same issue, but at a point, sure. he would, yes. So, um, it's going to be tough for the Black Stars. And for me, I think if Black Stars can pick up four points in this group, Black Stars will go through to the next. Okay, cool. Godfrey said we should at least try to get a second place. We cannot afford a second place because we are likely to meet Cote d'Ivoire. That is yeah. if they top their group. This is a country that is hosting the tournament. Nobody will want, in fact, no. they will not want to, to not even top the group. Do you think we can beat, we, we can get to the first place? No, I mean, aside, I mean, coming, uh, facing Cote d'Ivoire, they, they have been our nightmare. <laughs> At the continental level, mm -hmm. I mean, most of the successes of Cote d'Ivoire mm -hmm. has come back uh, against a backdrop that 
we were, they were the uh, Ivory Coast or the elephants of the Côte d'Ivoire trust at, at this continental. Level. 2015 is mm -hmm. the most recent one. Mm -hmm. I mean, a real heartbreak that Ghanaians are still trying to move their way out of. So for me, I think that, and you look at the kind of stars that they've got, <laughs> it's, it should be very difficult. They are, these are not just stars. These are very experienced, yes. experienced players. Likes of Max Riedel and very, very experienced players who are also playing quality, uh, playing quality time at their various clubs in Europe or elsewhere. And I don't think that we've got the we've got talents, yes, but I don't think that on paper we can match up to the pedigree of Cote d'Ivoire if you should meet them. But this is African Cup of Nations. Every team has got a chance. Now for us, uh, either a first place finish or whatever it is, even if we happen to qualify on third place, on third place. <laughs> yes. We, all, we need to go to the other 16. Mean, all Ghanaians want is that we want to see our blasters at least rewrite their wrongs in Cameroon 2021, at least by getting to the quarterfinals and even finals. And even some journalists do not even believe that the blasters can get there. But I think <laughs> that with a, with a football lens, it is very difficult. But with a citizen lens, as a Ghanaian who pays tax, who love the black stars, who identifies with the team, who want to see them go all the way to the final. And I think that against Egypt, though Goffred is riding off, uh, is, 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 is riding off that particular game because normally games with Minos are very yeah, cruel. Yeah. They come with, with so much expectation, very physical. And I don't think that our team, we've got so many physical players in it. Inaki is too gentle, Kudus, very strong. The other players, Andrea Yu is aged. He does not have the strength again to contain some of these players. But in Egypt, at least there'll be some flair. But the Egyptians themselves have... Yeah, yeah, they, they, they have, you see, the Egyptian story, they have the biggest story in this group. Mm -hmm. You come to the AFCON uh, 2017, miss out on a final. Mm -hmm. You come to 2021, mm -hmm. they missed out on penalty shootouts against Senegal, where Senegal won. So they have the biggest story in this group. So yes, um, I, I think I side with, with what Victor is saying. Yeah, but I'm making this point sure. because, look, the Ghanaian situation now, they are last at form. If you look at the Ghanaian form guide, it's terrible. <laughs> very, Let's very, all miss yeah. words about this. Yeah, you see, very, we very. need to do a reality check before the game starts. And we need to say, look in our face and say, hey, we are really low. So then the tactical approach to games need to solve those problems in the immediate. Sure. So that it not open up when play end-to-end -end football and concede goals and things get bad and we come back. And you know the famous Ghanaian, Ghanaian caption, anytime we go for a tournament and goes bad, we are sorry. We are sorry. <laughs> and, and, and plus the calculation, yeah, the mathematics yeah. that we'd have to do last minutes in, in tournament. I mean, I yeah. don't want to see some of those things repeat for us. We should have a clear game plan one game after time. Look, by now, our coach should have on paper and all the players should be aware of the point they want to amass in our first game, yeah. the point they want to amass in the next yeah. game, and even the third game, how they want to do it. Even some of the players should be caught and given that, look, Inaki, this game against Kip Vert, we want to see you on the score sheet. You need to bet in some of the players, yeah. at least in this African yeah. Cup of Nations. Else, I mean, it will not be the best of story for us. Godfrey, which of these teams can we beat in our group? In our group, I'll say we can beat Mozambique. And we can and we can draw with Cape Verde. Then what happens to Egypt? And even yeah. if we get that and yeah. we lose to Egypt, yeah. we are I, I was telling you that if Ghana manages to make four points, mm -hmm. Ghana will go through. Okay. Now I'm looking at that because when you go to twenty twenty one and you do a permutation of the points mm -hmm. that third teams third place teams mm -hmm. qualified. So in the group after we take um, the best two, that's the uh, winners of the group and runners up. Mm -hmm. We have 12 teams. Out of the uh, six third place teams, out of the third place teams in the six group, mm -hmm. four of the best will qualify. qualify. And usually when you have four points, you don't really have issues <laughs> making no. it to the round of you six. You concede less. Yes. Okay. So, so that's what I'm saying that for me, my target for Ghana should be four points. Okay. If Ghana is able to make it through, I think Ghana will be fine. Kweku, who can <laughs> we beat? Well, I think I side with Godfrey. The Mozambique game is a game that we should not play with at all. At least it's a game that we have to nest the three maximum points. Mm -hmm. I mean, else it would be a very huge apology to Ghanaians mm -hmm. with all these stars that we've, we've brought into this tournament. Inaki Williams, Atletico Belbao, Kudus Mohamed, West Ham. Mm -hmm. You've got the captain himself. I mean, he's back onto the field. Yeah. Lee Harvey. You've got Osman Bukari, who have been the UEFA Champions League. Mm -hmm. Just look at the quality of players that we've got. And against the Mozambique side, and you tell Ghanaians that <laughs> you cannot pick, you cannot win the three maximum point. I mean, I think it's something very difficult. For Kivet, it's, it's a very dicey game because they are so physical. Mm -hmm. And you see, at times, I fear when the Black Stars are going to games with teams or Minos that are very motivated and very physical. Comoros is a good steady case for us. 
I mean, I'm so we underrated that particular game and then we're punished for it. And even with Egypt, that I think that we can make a point from Egypt's game, at least a draw for it. I'm sure we can make a point from that game. Though Egypt, uh, on paper, they are favorite. But if we want to do it as Ghana, with history and everything, I think that we can do something. Because the Egyptians, at least, they'll be in to win their eighth AFCON. But when you look at the fact room of the players, they are coming with 21 players from the Egyptian Premier League. Most of them belong to El Ali. Mm -hmm. I think that, and they are also in a round to make case for African football that, yes, players can play on the African continent and still beat the big guys from anywhere in Europe. I think that Ghana, we should be serious and at least do something. Four points is not Wait, bad for us. Okay, so, I mean, I know we've already qualified from the group stages. After the group <laughs> stages, I mean, every every Ghanaian wishes to bring the <laughs> That's very true. We, we may not be able to bring the cup, but at least on, on we, paper can, mathematics. we can qualify beyond the group stages. After that, which team should we look out for? We have Senegal who won the last tournament. They want to retain it. We have Nigeria. Then we have this craziness of African countries. <laughs> which country should we look out for? I think in the African Cup of Nations, we should be on outlook for the countries. Mm -hmm. Look, it is in every two years. And you would have to do it. Then you must do it the hard way. Mm -hmm. Even Egypt themselves or Senegal themselves, after in winning in Cameroon 2021, they have to do it the hard way. Okay. Look at the run Egypt gave them in that final. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why we are saying that, look, when it comes to the African Cup of Nations, it is about motivation. Mm -hmm. It is about determination. It is about how hungry the team is willing to end the roles between poor runs and making history. And the blasters should be capped out for that. We want whether it is Ivory Coast, because they've got, clearly Ivory Coast mm -hmm. is favorites on paper yeah. ahead of us. We cannot talk about Senegal with the kind of stars they've got, mm -hmm. Sadio Mane, Khalid Kribali, Papisa, all these are quality. Algeria wounded lions. Wounded lions. <laughs> the way they exited out of Cameroon is something that will go down in their football history as one of the worst, and they want to make amends in this Cote d'Ivoire. Cameroon, this is a more hungry Cameroon side that felt that they should have won the 21 African Cup of Nations on home soil, but they missed it. So they want to make uh, corrections in Cote d'Ivoire. I mean, look, when it comes to the big guns at the moment, I mean, most of them are ahead of us. But I'm not writing up the Black Stars. I'm saying this is football. Yes. Anything can happen. Even aside the big teams, even the minors. Look at what Equatorial Guinea to Algeria. Yeah. Look at what even Comoros did to us. So we need to plan for everything because if, mind you, if you plan for the big team and you happen to meet yeah. the middle and you, you, don't, you, you don't take them serious and they shock you, <laughs> it can be a huge thing. Because there, there are some countries who are also on the rise, like Zambia mm -hmm. and uh, Abam Grant. Perfect. They have been phenomenal. And so there are a lot of surprise packages mm -hmm. for teams that um, do not respect other teams. Mm -hmm. And Ghana will not want to be one of the teams that do that. Do you think that there's a special way we can, mm -hmm. uh, we can pull surprises? Because it looks like a lot of Ghanaians already do not have so much hope in the Black Stars. Can we pull surprises? Yeah. I think for Ghana, our greatest strength lies in attack. But if our defense hold it so well. And that's why Mohamed Salis is crucial in that defense. It's also good that you have Alexander Jiku okay. in form. If you look at the statistics, he's one of the best top three defenders currently in the Turkish league. Okay. For Fenerbahce, he's been so crucial to Fenerbahce's mm -hmm. uh, 14th mm -hmm. in the league this season. Mm -hmm. So, I think that Ghana will need to focus on... I think the defensive problem mm -hmm. is a problem that has spanned from the period of Otu Ado. Sure. Till now. Mm -hmm. But I don't try to work on it, but now it is really gone off, especially the fullbacks. And I know that Chris Hutton is having a huge headache managing his fullbacks because of the what he went through during the two friendly games. Sure. That lead to say do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be interesting. So I think that for me, that's what Ghana needs to do. If there's any magic one Ghana needs to use to end up very far, it has to be that defensive setup. You need to make sure they are polished. You need to make sure they are well screened. If you are able to do that, think that how we get the goals, be able to grind it. If you are even getting good draws in some games, sure. I think that they are crucial. Which of these teams should we pay special attention to? In, in Ghana's group? No, no, I mean in the, uh, the other groups. Zambia. Zambia. Zambia is a team that could bring a lot to this AFCOM. I mean, if, if you, you've observed them, in the past six games, it is, it is Zambia. What, what they are doing now, and that Avam Grant is huge. And Avam Grant knows the African game too. 
We've seen coaches like Heavy Renard who have stepped up, the likes of Hugo Bros and Co, who have been around and understand the African terrain. Mm. And I think that Zambia is a team that has played with spirit. In somewhere 2013, when yeah. they beat Ghana, they were riding on the back of that spirit. That's where Christopher yeah. Katongo, <laughs> Captain Fantastic, led mm -hmm. uh, Zambia all through uh, to be able to do the impossible mm -hmm. and the heavy rain. And so uh, let's watch out for Zambia. Yeah, I think just to also touch on that, I think the very excellent point by Godfrey, I think the Zambian team is a team we need to be on the outlook for. And the fact that they are also led by a coach that have coached us before really mm -hmm. understands uh, uh, this system mm -hmm. and have even coached some of these our players. Andrea and Jordan, he has mm -hmm. managed them, so he knows their mentality, he knows what they bring to the African Cup of Nations. And even the fact that the Zambians themselves are not putting so much pressure on mm -hmm. this team. Mm -hmm. I spoke to a colleague who works with the Zambian mm -hmm. broadcast Corporation. Mm -hmm. And she told me, look, we know that we are in transition. We just told the boys, go and enjoy yourself. We, we don't want to embed in the team. Look, let's credit Coach um, Avram Grant for what he has done. Messing uh, of the, uh, the, the net between the old players and then mm -hmm. the new ones. Paxin Dakar, excellent for Leicester City. Uh, Fashin Sakala, very mm -hmm. excellent player. You look at how he has been able to unlock their goal scoring ability. Mm -hmm. Makes every Zambian excited anytime they are, they are, they are playing. If Zambia is able to score the Ivory Coast, it, it tells you of what they can do in this African Cup of Nations. So, Kweku, are you saying or do you think that we should give the same kind of encouragement to the Black Stars? Because already we have very little hope in them. Do you think that we should just allow them to <laughs> enjoy themselves and come back? No, I think that uh, right now, I mean, we are facing a, a huge uh, litmus test and we have to be very real to ourselves. Our Black Stars are not at where they are where they used to be between 28 to, um, I think, 2017, where mostly they would have made their semi-final death. They've declined. What, is a, what, what are we doing for them as a nation? We have to lessen expectations on the black start. But in doing so, in the back room, there should be talks to the players that, look, the country is not pressing you, but please ensure that you deliver. Don't forget, some of these players even have names to protect mm -hmm. in this particular African mm -hmm. Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. Inaki cannot come after splashing all the goals in a Spanish mm -hmm. Alexa today, you cannot just come and lazy about and go back. They've got themselves because at times it is at this continental level that you, you get some huge contract. So the players also have that at the back of their mind. Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying is that, look, let's be very real to ourselves. Our Black Stars is not at where they used to be some years ago. Let's give them that. Go and enjoy yourself. But in enjoying yourself, at least make sure you make it out of the group stage. Tomorrow, Kved, what are your expectations? It should be, I think it's our first game, and we cannot uh, draw blank in that game. At least we need to rescue a point from that particular game. Uh, I also also love to see the Blasters getting a goal, because once they get a goal in the first match, at least it brings some sort of confidence in the team, uh, approaching other matches. I want them to be very cautious about it. We don't, I don't want to see most of our players playing very high up the pitch, and then when uh, the Kvedians, I mean, are transiting with those long balls, then our defenders are found wanting. At times, you get a little, you say, you're going too much, forgetting that he has a goal mouth to protect. Then when the balls are thrown back, you realize that before he gets there, he's, he's too tired, I mean, to catch up with his opponent player. So I just want to be very cautious. Like Godfrey said, make sure that your defense is very watertight. If we will not score, let us also ensure that Kvedian will not score. Godfrey, your expectations for tomorrow? Yeah, I think that um, early goals will be key to the Black Stars' fortunes in the African Cup of Nations. So mm -hmm. the Black Stars needs to find a balance. Mm -hmm. There should be a plan to get goals between the first 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And if that works against Kivet, Ghana could hit the quarterfinals or semifinals. So against Kivet, um, it, it depends on uh, the tactical approach to the game. Mm -hmm. I saw him in, employ a 4 4 2 narrow. Sure. in the um, game against Namibia. Namibia. And he spoke a lot about it. I don't know if that's going to be the approach. Mm -hmm. But um, I expect that uh, the Kivedians will come at us like they are playing a team like Lesotho. Mm -hmm. So Ghana should expect that. Mm -hmm. They are going to come at you so hard. They are going to get into your minds very early. Because sure. mentally too, we've proven over the course of time that mm -hmm. we are a team that when it comes to big moments, we are very weak. Mm -hmm. Like we saw against Uruguay. Mm -hmm. And so it's just about a certain key moment. Like we saw against Comoros. Mm. when something goes wrong. So they, they, want, they want to snap that at us. And if we badge, then we'll be found wanting. So that game, I expect that 
once we get a goal in the first 30 minutes, uh, we are going to win that game. But I don't expect anything extraordinary from the Black Stars. There's still a lot of new faces in our midfield. Sure. And I think that that could really disturb how we get a, a, a good start. We take time to warm up in the game. But the Black Stars have always been seen to be slow starters. Yeah. Can we afford to slow start this time? We can't, but sometimes per circumstance. So, for example, if you listen to my analysis on the players, I was telling you that look at that midfield. You have Mohamed Salis, uh, you have um, Salis Samet, mm -hmm. who um, is going to be your um, number six, a uh, defensive midfielder. Take him out. Who else has been in that midfield for a tournament? Mm -hmm. Or who else has uh, played constantly for three or four games? Mm -hmm. uh, with Salis. You, you can't mention. Mm -hmm. We can talk about Baba Idrisu. Quite recently for Almeria, Baba Idrisu has not been the Baba Idrisu I've known. You look at how he even left Mallorca. Then you want to come to Elijah Wusu again. Elijah, sometimes you hear of him, sometimes he's quiet. And then you're looking at Majid Ashmero, who has been battling with injuries. Quite recently, there's a bit of stability, but I don't know how fine he is to be able to play the ragged um, and, the, and the tough physical African football. Yes. So your coach, coach um, Chris Hutti, may even now be looking at players like... Um, Jordan for a free role, <laughs> especially when you have a team who, that has uh, a plethora of wingers. Sure. Osman Bukhari, Joseph sure. Pick. We, we need these guys. That's what I'm saying that, frankly, we may not have too much of an option, but if you're able to turn the tables and get a goal in the first 30 minutes, this game should go for, for, for the Black Stars. Kweku, who, which teams will you take for at least the final four? Final four? Mm. Um, it's a very difficult one. Um, I think I wish I could see the groups. Um, I think Group A, we've got Cote d'Ivoire and Nigeria in there. Yeah. And <laughs> these are two heavy <laughs> weights. Mm -hmm. If it's anything to go by, at least you want to fancy the chances of the home nation, Cote d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. at least to breathe through, at least with the full voice mm -hmm. of the fans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You come to Group B, yeah. you look at Ghana, you look at Egypt, <laughs> you want to give our own blasters a chance, at least as a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. and praying that the stars, at least this time <laughs> around, will sign in Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. But for Egypt, I think they have been all-time African favorites, considering what they've done in the African Cup of Nations, and so they are untouchable. Mm -hmm. You want to give them the chance to go through. Mm -hmm. You get to Group C, where you have other, I think, Algeria and the rest, who have also got a lot of history and a lot of things to prove in this Afcon. You want to give Algeria a chance. Uh, you go to Cameroon, big, big country, mm -hmm. so many pl uh, uh, platorial stars, Vincent Abubakar, may, uh, maybe he might be in a good form to continue. Kalitoku we can be Chopo Motin, these are quality players. So you want to give them a, a, a back pass, mm -hmm. at least to ride in. Mm -hmm. Then you also talk about um, uh, Senegal. I mean, defending champions who, at the moment, are the, aside Morocco, are the favorite to at least defend it or win it. I think it, it, a lot of teams, and it's very difficult to always be precise when it comes to the African Cup of Nations at times. Your best for? Um, I'll go for Senegal. Okay. And then Morocco. Okay. And then uh, between Ivory Coast and Algeria. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Egypt, I mean, Egypt, no, I, I don't I don't see Egypt, Egypt making the, the top four. Oh, okay. Yes. What about uh, Tunisia? No, Tunisia no, will not make the top four. Um and that that's just my, my belief okay. out of conviction. Okay. Yes. So so I think these, these are the teams I would say. Finally, to Ghanaians, I mean, uh, the Black Stars will definitely need all our support. Sure. What would you want to tell Ghanaians? Uh, I, I think that uh, Victor said it from the start, prayers, or, or we need to take papers and pens and start calculating. Start calculating <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, but, but, but we should lower expectations. That's the truth of the matter. Okay. Um, we saw a transition, an mm -hmm. uh, extraordinary transition from 2002. And I, I've been extended to 2014. Mm -hmm. And I think it ended then. Sure. When we're too busy, um, I mean, dancing in, in glory, thinking that it may never end, it had ended. Mm -hmm. After we failed to qualify for that World Cup. Mm -hmm. And getting back is not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. If you look at even countries like Senegal, they've gone through the same routes. Sure. After 2002, they were quiet until somewhere 2014, before they've also started. Mm -hmm. So it may take some time. Mm -hmm. so, so let's be, let's be measured in expectations, expectations and let's only hope mm -hmm. that the stars would show up or for tournaments sometimes mm -hmm. um players get to mm -hmm. 
gather uh, a lot more courage and form and enthusiasm and momentum with tournaments. Okay. Yo. Yeah, I think it's a very average squad that we've got in terms of age. So it tells you that there's huge prospect for us in the coming years. Uh, Ghanaians, like Godfrey Riley said, you should only go into this tournament with hope. We shouldn't give our players huge uh, expectation because the reality check is that we do not have the form to be able to compete for the African Cup. It would be a serious miracle if you're able to lift it on the coast of Ivory Coast. But with that being said, I think that Ghanaians should love, come out, share the blasters. Let us, you know, we are known for taking over social media. <laughs> Let us do it the right way. Let us motivate the players. Because, mind you, the players have phone. They go on the internet. If all the tweets coming in or all the uh, Facebook com uh, uh, comment coming are very positive, we are urging them on. I tell yeah. you that it can translate into the team and on the field deliver for us. Thank you very much.